What is up everyone and welcome to Monday's video. We're kicking off the week with a massive bang. We're doing something that I haven't done in years and years and that is a dedicated tour of a geek's desk. Now as you guys know I've recently been completing my Ultimate Desk Setter project. If you haven't seen that video series please follow the link in the video description. It'll take you to a playlist with all of the Ultimate Desk Setup videos and you can see this setup grow from my old one to this new one right here. It's not perfect and it's not like a, a million pound setup with all awesome stuff. This is just my setup and the best that I have done with the stuff that I have got and I am so so proud of it and it is so much better than it used to be. Um, there are still a couple of things that I'd love to change but they can be easily addressed in the future. So without further ado, sit back, relax and enjoy the tour of my ultimate desk setup. So I said I was saving this video for the Hackintosh, as you guys can see there, I'm still rocking the Mac Pro obviously, um, and I wanted to do one with the Mac Pro because I've been working so hard on this desk setup with the Mac Pro, I thought it would be really nice to show it in its glory with the Mac Pro in place. I'll do another one with the Hackintosh in place because maybe a few things will change by then, but I thought I would start off by doing it like this. I just want to give the Mac Pro 2008 its final little bit in the spotlight with this video. So, rambling aside, here is my desk. It is a corner desk. For those of you who always ask where I got this desk, I got this desk second hand and it came with all sorts of cabinets and whatnot. If you go back to 2010 when I first got this room set up, you will see a load of cabinets and stuff. Um, it was kind of a limiting setup. That's why you see these little holes in the desk. That's where the cabinets used to be screwed in and there was a big shelf across the top and it was kind of like a boxy design. But now all it is is a corner desk with a few convenient little shelves underneath it and an, uh, quite a nice design. It's not a really, really good quality desk or anything, but it has really, really served me well. I've damaged it quite a lot with various things, especially on the edge here and also various marks and whatnot on the surface, but you can only really tell when you start looking. So my desk has actually got two major parts. We have this, which is my computer setup, and this, which is my sort of side bit. I used to do a lot of videos here and I've recently clear cleared it up to uh, start working on the Hackintosh. Here is the Hackintosh with a couple of components. There's my old MacBook Pro. Um, find out what I'm doing with that in a future video. There's that free PC. Anything you see on this video, by the way, guys, always has uh, videos on my channel. Well, if it doesn't, that's a massive shocker. So always go on my channel and search if you want to see something cool. So yeah, we won't be covering this half. We'll just be covering the desk setup half. So, let's get started. We'll go from left to right and then we'll look at a final overview and chat about a couple of things at the end. We'll start with the desktop and we'll briefly go underneath, but um, yeah, there's not much to see under there. Starting over here, we have a Nintendo 64. This is not my custom painted one, as you guys can probably tell. That's sitting in my girlfriend's house at the moment. I have a single controller, a single memory card, and I have a couple of games here. The rest are down her house because that's where I play N64 the most. This is connected to my composite VGA adapter that I made a video about quite a long time ago. I had my GameCube here for the longest time and I thought I'd have a change. I got an N64 here. It's always nice to have a console on the setup, especially because I don't have a gaming PC on the setup and the GT64. 40 isn't the most capable card inside the Mac Pro. Um, it's always nice to, if you know my video is exporting or compressing or rendering or whatever, I can just switch the center monitor, play a little bit of N64, and because it's a cartridge system, it's really quick to load up. So that's the N64 on my setup. It's nice to have that integrated. Here we have a coaster. This is where I put all of my drinks because it's very safe if the drinks tip over here, which they have done in the past, there's nothing that can really get damaged. Anything on there will get damaged, obviously, but in terms of the computer and the setup, uh, nothing gets damaged, so that's good. Here we have the SD card. This is my vlogging SD card, so I swap it out in this camera. The SD card in this camera at the moment is an identical one, but I use it for all of my weekly videos, and then this one is dedicated to vlogs because I often record vlogs during, like I'm recording a vlog right now that will Probably go live tomorrow so um, you will see that tomorrow but yeah that'll be recorded on this SD card here we have the remote for my desk LED lighting um, so this is the lighting strip that you can't clearly see because I have video lights switched on but if I go behind 
you're not meant to see behind because it's meant to be all hidden and whatnot, but there you go. I've got LEDs going behind all three monitors and it lights up the wall and it looks stunning. You can see it all the way over the other side of the road. It's, uh, it's really nice. I like these remote control LEDs and they're getting very popular now. So, coming round, this is where my camera usually sits, but of course I'm using my camera right now, so we just have the tripod adapter for the tripod that I use most of the time, and also the lens cap cover um, for this camera. Now, Christian donated this camera and it's been rock solid. It's been really great. I do have a few hiccups with it, guys, including focusing. Um, so I'm always trying new ways to sort of improve it. But the fact that the video quality and the light reproduction is just so much better, it really makes it worth it. Um, coming over, we start to get on to the main guts of the setup. So as you can see, I have three monitors. They're three Dell monitors. I did have a BenQ in the center, but um, if you look at the end of my Ultimate Desk Setup playlist, you'll see the BenQ goes up to the studio and it actually does really well up there. These are all 16 by 10 monitors. I thought I wanted the 16 by 9 in the center, but turns out it's much easier to have 16 by 10 all round. So this is a Dell 2009W, as is this. They are both 20 inch, very old by now, uh, 20 inch TN panel monitors, I believe. Um, nine, uh, 1680 by 1050. 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and that is pretty much it. They are decent monitors, but getting a little bit old by today's standards. Of course, they're not LED or whatever, but they're on Duronic monitor stands, uh, monitor desk clamp arms, as you can see, or you can't really see because they're meant to be pretty much hidden. I think it looks great myself. Um, as you can see, this one is now hidden as well because it, it, the bar used to be there when I first had this setup, but now it's behind the speaker. It looks great. So yeah, they are getting a bit old by today's standards, but I really, really like them. Unfortunately, the picture is drastically different on each because that one's actually running on VGA and that one's running on uh, HDMI to DVI. So the picture is noticeably different, believe it or not, guys. If people tell you that VGA doesn't look that different to DVI or HDMI, then it depends on the monitor, obviously, but on a monitor like this, you can really notice it. It also depends on the internals of the monitor itself. It's not all the fault of VGA, you know. I'm fine with VGA. Um, but yeah, I'm running that on VGA because the Mac Pro GT640 is quite limited. Or should I say the PC GT640 that I've got in my Mac Pro. Um, so, they are the two outer monitors. I aren't, I'm not looking to upgrade yet, because if I was looking to upgrade, then I'd like to get three of the same monitors and to get two more Dell U2412Ms, that would be quite an investment for me because this is a good £200 monitor, I believe. This is the 24-inch IPS LED centerpiece, 1920 by 1200, 16 by 10, uh, 24 inch, lovely height of just stand. It's a great, great monitor. The BenQ was also great, and the BenQ does a lot of things better than this does, but this does a lot of things better than the BenQ does. And I decided that the BenQ 24 inch 1920 by 1080 monitor, 16 by 9, was better off in the studio. So that is the overall monitor setup. I've got quite a lot of screen space, and triple monitors take a lot of time to get used to, but once you do, they are amazing, and as you guys can see from the sitting position here, it just looks awesome. So coming down then, we have my iPod. This is an iPod video, I believe the fifth generation iPod. Uh, 80 gigabytes, it's a really nice device. It's a hard drive iPod, you know, it's a good old classic iPod. Um, still works great. Brilliant, brilliant audio quality. I don't use it hardly ever these days, but when I do, it's rock, rock solid. Normally on big journeys and stuff like that. Because it's got a hard drive, I'm kind of wary of taking it out and about. And also, I don't actually have it permanently plugged into USB because I did. And it would just leave the iPod powered up all the time. And I thought that was, you know, definitely probably degrading the lifespan of the iPod because it was always spinned up and it didn't need to be. So I only plug it in when I need it. But yeah, it's a wonderful iPod and it's sitting there in the universal dock. Here we have my left channel creative speaker and my right channel creative speaker. I've had these for years and years. It's originally a 5.1 setup, but I'm only using it as a 2.1. Um, I would like 5.1 on the computer, but it's not that feasible with this system because the Mac Pro has Toslink output for its uh, surround sound, as you guys know, and my subwoofer only has the three separate 3.5 millimeter analog jack inputs for surround sound. So it works with the PC, but not with the Mac unless I had some kind of audio interface setup. And I don't really want to get into all that. It's not worth it for surround sound. And I don't really do a lot that requires surround sound here. I'm a surround sound nut, 
but um, yeah, maybe in the future sometime. It's just not feasible with this setup at the moment. Coming down, we have an Apple Pro keyboard or just an Apple USB keyboard, I believe this one is. This is the one that has no height adjust, but it has the USBs in the back. This is my favorite Apple keyboard, I think. Um, there are better keyboards from the 90s and stuff, but I just love the look of this keyboard. It feels okay to type on. I prefer typing on this than the new aluminum flat keyboard because I'm a fan of the old school, you know, big long key travel keys. But as you can probably hear, this keyboard is a membrane keyboard and I will be upgrading to a mechanical keyboard very soon. There is a Mac specific mechanical keyboard, I can't remember who makes it now, but it looks very similar to this. Uh, it's about £110 so it is an investment, but I am looking to get that soon. I may get it as a treat for myself when I uh, have the Hackintosh up and running, but the Hackintosh will cost me enough money as it is, so maybe I can't go splashing on keyboards. But considering Joe's really generous donation, I may be able to splash on keyboards. By the way guys, a lot of people often comment on the distance between my the front of the desk and the keyboard and mouse they say you know is that just pushed back there do you drag it forward when you use it or what uh, no I actually find it most comfortable to use my setup with my arms outstretched as much as possible it's much much easier on my arms my back and my neck and something that having these monitors mounted and up high has really helped with is my posture um, now, one thing you can see on camera is you can see that the center monitor looks a lot more blue than the outer monitors. I do tend to take all of my color accuracy from the center monitor, and I've started using Final Cut differently since I've brought this IPS panel down. I now have my events and browser on this display, and I have the timeline and the viewer on this display. So um, I now watch my videos, and I can get much better color reproduction with my videos and much better color correction now that it's on that center monitor. I look back at old videos. Videos now when I was using these monitors to color correct and man some of them are just bright pink so uh, that's a bit of a shame but videos look a lot better color wise now as I'm sure you guys have noticed here we have my mouse it is a Logitech something or other can't remember the model number off the top of my head I may have a video on it I may not but it's just um, it's meant to be a gaming mouse I think I just picked it because it was big and it was cheap for the quality and it's an okay mouse I kind of like it um, I'm not thinking of changing it anytime soon it's just it's fine it fits my hand brilliantly I love big mice but the only concern I have it's not really a concern because I've lived with it for a good few years now the only thing I don't really like about it that much is the scroll wheel is very loud and it's quite hard to turn. It's not difficult to turn, obviously. It's just, it requires a little more effort than I'd like. I'd like the option to have some kind of smooth scroll, you know, where you can push it in and you can just ride the scroll wheel. I'd really like that, but you know, this mouse is great and it's got speed adjust built in, which is handy. It's very cool. Uh, coming round to like a little bit of a bits and bobs side of my desk, as you guys can probably tell, I'm trying to keep my desk quite clear and it's working so far. Here I have another coaster. I rarely use it. If I do, it's normally for a bottle or a can or something. If I've got, say, a cup, cup of tea there, I rarely, rarely use it because, of course, if it tipped over, it tipped straight into the Mac Pro. Over here I have a few bits and bobs. I have the one ornament that stayed on my desk. This is a Dalek made out of nuts and bolts and pieces of chain and various bits of metal. It's a very, very cool ornament. I love it. It's very heavy. Um, it's just very cool. Here is my old camcorder. Still used for a couple of bits and bobs. Nothing that much YouTube related, but there is a couple of things that this old reliable camera does a bit better than this new Fujifilm camera, including autofocus. Um, but sacrifices that I'm willing to make, this picture quality is stunning. And of course, this one is full 1080p. This one is 1080i, so yeah. Um, but, you know... It, it has its place and it'll be handy for when I want to do multicam stuff and that. Here I have a Phillips screwdriver. It's orange. I really like orange. It's a decent size for most general repairs. That's why I keep it out on my desk. Here I have a knife. I use it for my unboxings. This is a World War... I, think, I believe it's a World War One or World War Two knife that my dad gave me. It's absolutely wonderful. I really like it. It needs sharpening, but I kind of like it bluntish because it works quite well. Um, so that's the knife. Here we have a little portable magnifying glass. As you guys know, I've got very bad eyesight, so I'm often using magnifying glasses. This one's nice. It's got a fold-out design. It's very handy. Here I have um, a pen drive from Joe, and I'm starting to use this pen drive now as my uh, daily pen drive because it's got a very nice design. I'll be putting it on my keys soon. And that is it for that little corner, apart from this clip-on um, magnifier that is has more of a magnification than the portable one. So if I want to put anything under it to read or whatever, I can use that and I can see it. So that is really great and very, very handy. Coming over here to the beast of the setup then, this is my awesome Mac Pro 2008. 
I love it to pieces and I really, really hope I don't have to sell it when the Macintosh, uh, when the Hackintosh is built. I'd love to put this Mac Pro up in the studio, so hopefully I'll be able to do that. This is a little extension that my dad built me out the side of my desk um, quite a while ago now. I think when, back in 2011, it's been very handy. Um, so the Mac Pro is sitting on there. On top of the Mac Pro we have a 3TB Western Digital MyBook for Time Machine. It backs up everything apart from my video editing drive. My video editing scratch disk is not backed up at the moment, that's a 2TB. This just backs up um, Macintosh HD along with the storage drive and uh, miscellaneous drive with all sorts of films and oh, my iTunes drive, yeah. Here we have two um, camera chargers. This is for the battery for this camera and that camera. So it's very easy, they're always plugged into the mains. I can just pop them in and away to go. Here we have an SD card reader. I, I do have a stand for this, but it is very, very flimsy. So I just have that sitting on top of the Mac Pro there. And that's how I import all of my footage for my YouTube videos these days. I used to plug the camcorder in because it used to import really fast compared to using the SD card reader. But with this one, I use the SD card reader. I don't know, it's just become uh, a natural thing to do. In those two boxes, they are somewhat now organized, various computer parts that I can access quickly, SATA cables, Molex extensions, um, a couple of hard drives, just various simple things, you know, replacement DVD drives if I ever need them. There's a few good things in there, all sorts of handy little bits and bobs, but it does need clearing out. And on the floor in front of the Mac Pro, we just have miscellaneous crap that I need to organize actually, so that's not worth showing. By the way, guys, the rest of the room is a tip. This is the only, only tidy part at the moment. So, quickly then, we'll focus under the desk, but not too much. Let's, get, let's go under here and see what we've got. So this is the famous Mac Mini server shelf. As you can see, it's all looking a little bit wonky and whatnot. Um, it's not ideal, but it's not a setup that I'll have like this for very long. Um, it is working really, really well, but I'm not utilizing it to its full potential yet. I've still got a lot of plans to cover with this little server shelf. So we have two Mac Minis. Bottom one's a Mac Mini G4, 1.25 gigahertz. Top one is a Mac Mini Core 2 Duo, I believe, 1.83 gigahertz. Above it, we have a Netgear uh, switch, gigabit switch, and then we have uh, no, sorry, that's a TP-Link switch. This is a Netgear router, wireless router. I want to use it as just a modem very soon and get another wireless access point coming out of one of these uh, gigabit jacks and going somewhere on the landing or near my bedroom door, a little bit more central to the house, and I want to disable this Wi-Fi altogether. Um, coming over, we have the power bricks. The reason I've got them sitting here is because the Mac Minis are on 24-7, um, so it's important to keep the power bricks out in the open so that they don't suffocate, and I like them having a nice bit of airflow. Here I have the controller for my speakers. It basically allows me to plug headphones in, change the bass and change the volume. I do all of my volume control on the keyboard and the subwoofer level remains the same. Here I have a two terabyte drive that's connected to my Mac Mini. This is storage that I can access from my MacBook Pro when I'm anywhere in the world. Um, a recent addition, screen sharing, you know, over the internet, WAN screen sharing, opened up a couple of ports on the router, it was very easy, should have done it a long time ago, makes uploading videos and stuff very, very easy. And then here we have the switch for my KVM. Um, this allows me to switch between the Mac Pro and the free um, KVM stem that I have under here. All I've got to do is yank this one white cable and that gives me a DVI, USB and audio for display, keyboard, mouse and speakers for a test system. Very, very handy. Um, there's the back of the Mac Pro, all the connections going in there. Coming down, we have a few simple little things. We have a new 30-pin connector cable for my iPod that I haven't set up yet. That's just sitting there. We have a DVD that I'm meant to watch. We have blank media, CDs, DVDs, dual layer DVDs. Behind there, we have some sellotape and miscellaneous other little things. And there we have a camera bag for my camcorder. Um, coming over here, we have my bin. This shelf is kind of interesting. These are all a load of copied Mac games. Um, so Mac games that I've downloaded and you need to run with a disc. But now I use Toast just to run them. And oh, actually, they don't run on um, Yosemite these days. So they're mainly Power PC games. Um, behind there, we have uh, my stack of PC games. And then we have all this camera cleaning equipment. Lots of it is new. Camera cleaning equipment, screen cleaning equipment. We also have CPU th uh, thermal paste remover and CPU cleaner. A load of cleaning products there, microfibers and stuff. Um, so that's very handy. And then coming up here, we have all of my software that's on DVDs, as well as a capture card, loads of batteries and uh, miscellaneous software, all sorts of different things. Over here, we have my creative subwoofer, which also provides amplification for the satellite speaker.
speakers and connects to the remote and makes things very easy. Here we have a money box that does not have money in it. It's just got a couple of important little papers and whatnot in it. I'm waiting to sort this out and get rid of it because it does rattle ever so slightly on top of the stub. And here we have two Duronic surge protectors. They are 12 sockets each. One stays on constantly, which is the one with that gigabyte plug, uh, gigabit, uh, 200 megabit, sorry, um, Ethernet power line adapter in it. That stays on permanently. And then that one is the stuff that could be powered off every night. So I do have two switches. I showed all that in my Ultimate Desk set of progress. So you guys check that out if you're interested, if you haven't already. So that's under there. The cabling is not perfect, but it's a lot, a lot better than it used to be. And to be perfectly honest, guys, you can never, ever see it. So I'm very pleased with that cabling and you can't really see any cables on the desktop. All you can see is a cable running down from that surround speaker for my, uh, for my room setup, but that's okay. Um, I did actually miss out these two things at the top. This is my Apple Firewire EyeSight camera. I will upgrade it when I have the bandwidth to stream in HD, but at the moment I can't stream in anything more than 240p, so there's no point upgrading the camera. Um, it still provides a nice picture and I love the original EyeSight. And this is my blue snowball on its lovely uh, scissor clamp stand thing that I've got connected to the back of the monitor. If I show you there, it's connected there. Looks absolutely awesome and it actually performs absolutely awesome. So I can bring the mic right into where my head is and do voiceovers, do this, do that. Uh, and also it's there for streaming and Skype chats. It just works fantastically. And to anyone that Skype chatted with me lately, I haven't had a webcam. I now have the webcam fully connected, as you know. So that is it, guys. That is my ultimate desk setup. It won't be everyone's ultimate setup, but to me and with the resources that I had, this is totally, totally ultimate. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I did promise this one for summer 2015. So look, I am finally early on at least one of the videos I've promised. This is my desk. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Um, please leave your feedback, comments. I'm looking forward to hearing them. And of course, I will see you in tomorrow's video, which may be that vlog that I mentioned, but I'm not 100% sure at the moment. So yeah, please subscribe, consider subscribing. There is a load, a load of cool stuff that happens on this channel because I know Tour of Geeks Desk's videos attract a lot of uh, newcomers. So uh, if you could check out my channel or to all of you newcomers, that would be wicked. I'd really appreciate it. We're an awesome little community here. But anyway, I will see you all in tomorrow's video. Have a brilliant evening. Blah, blah, blah. Cannot wait to make another video. Hope you enjoyed the desk. See you soon.